big, let's give a big warm welcome to Amazon Lit. Woo! Miami, what the fuck is up? For myself, it'd be motivation. I'm, I'm constantly surrounded around people that are trying to better themselves. A lot of sellers, and it's just, when I get home, I'm ready to grind. I, when I get home, I'm ready to grind. Like, prior to this, it'd just be Eric and myself going back and forth, seeing who could one-up each other, because we're very competitive. Imagine that. Uh, but when I'm around all of you, it just, it's a reminder of, hey, there's other people that are trying to do it. It brings me back to where I was, and, and I get home, and I'm inspired. So I've gotten my questions out of the way. Do you have any more, Taylor, before we open it up to everyone else? Anyone else have uh, a burning question for Amazon Lit? Who do you have hired for constant new suppliers or new uh, product leads? Well, the question was, who do I hire to source product leads? Like, do you have a team specifically to source new suppliers, oh, new leads, yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. So initially, in the early years, for the first, what, five, six years, it was, it was just Sebastian and me. You know, a little bit of help from Humble Ted as well, his uncle. You know, because it's like, who knows your business? You might hire someone to do that and they may just lack the certain thing that might require, be required to open that account, but they don't have the information. And because you wanted to outsource it six months in, one year in, 18 months in, now all of a sudden you've missed out on a potential distributor that could change the fucking game for you. But because you're trying to outsource to somebody else, so now to fast forward, five years later, our buyers are trained to source new vendors. We send our buyers to trade shows all over the country. They were just in Anaheim, Vegas. They're, they're going to Expo West, Snacks and Sweets Expo. So they're now building those relationships for us. Awesome, other questions? Okay, so it's pretty simple. What's you all end goal for everything? Life, business, family? The end goal. Wow, that's a great question. You know, the, uh, the other day I was at a mastermind in Mexico and I wrote an obituary for myself. And it was one of the most emotional things I've ever done. You know, I'm sitting in a room with two, 300 people and I'm looking to the left of me and to the right of me and everybody's fucking crying. You know, because I'm sitting here and I'm documenting like what would be read at my funeral the day that I die. Come to find out that all the, the monetary shit doesn't matter. You know, but, but what that does is allow me to create the experiences that I want to have with my family and my loved ones that was on that obituary, right? So I feel like God or whatever that being is that put me on this earth wants me to make a fuck ton of money, you know, but what am I doing with it? You know, am I helping my family? Am I giving back to the community? Because if I'm doing that, then it will be continue to come in abundance. But if I separate myself from that light and stop doing those things, then it will be cut off for me. And I firmly believe that. Thank you, appreciate it. The questions, guys, anything. These guys have social media. They have the social media experts, Amazon experts, obviously. Uh, these guys know their shit. I have a question I've been wanting to ask everybody um, that's been up here, um, but for you guys, do you plan out your days? Like, do you, like, I'm a very big list maker. Sorry, husband. I have chalkboards, like four in my kitchen, and I plan the day, I plan the week, I plan the month, you know, and I just wondered, like, how many people here plan it? Like, do you get up at six, you do a workout? Do you do a, at seven? Are you doing your, your emails or whatever? Because we're having a very hard time with time management. We work from sun up to sundown and don't feel like we're getting anything done. <laughs> yeah, so for, for um, I definitely need a schedule in my life, you know, like I have set meetings where people can schedule times with me and it's like I know what times of the day those are and what days of the week they are. I know initially my, mo mo my most productive time through the day is like 7 or really like 8 to 12. You know, I'd be kidding you if I told you 7, most times I'm not even up at 7. Um, but it's like 8 to 12, that's my most productive time through the day. So initially in the day, that's when I like to do my most productive tasks, the things that need to get done that day. And then it's like, after that, then it's kind of free to play around with like, okay, this, this doesn't need to get done today, but I now have the time, so let me allocate it. And, the, and a great thing for that is just Google Calendar. 
Like, cause then you get the notification five minutes before, you know, you're never late to anything, you do it. And then when it's over, you're on to the next thing. You have a scheduled time for that, that, that event. Yeah, I would say I, I have my tasks for the day, but I don't micromanage myself to the point where it's every hour. A, I'm a person that likes variety in my life, so I like to switch things up constantly. Uh, but I do, you know, get up at a certain time every day, go to the gym and, and do a little meditation to get my day started and prep before I go start taking care of everyone else. What Eric was saying, you know, about service. I too, my, my angle is service. The more service I provide for others, the more my higher power provides for me. It's just that simple. The more I do, the more I get. Um, and, and, and so there is no set schedule, but there are tasks that need to be done. What I do is I set my weekly goals and my 30 day goals, my quarterly goals, my yearly goals. I don't say when they have to be done, whether it's Friday or Saturday, but they have to be done during that week. And it gives me the flexibility to kind of do what I want, but still get what I need done. And that, that's really one of my favorite things about this whole entrepreneurship thing is like literally on a, on a Tuesday, if I don't feel like going to work till 10 o'clock or, or, or 930, because whatever, I had to stop at the get my laundry or I wanted to sleep. It doesn't matter, you know, because it's your schedule. So um, I know you guys have um, buyers and whatnot, kind of finding new relationships for you, new suppliers. When it was just you two calling and you knew there was a distributor that you really liked, really wanted, what was one of your main value propositions that you would kind of talk up, talk on when trying to land that account? Uh, I, I always like to throw spend out there, you know, what I'm expected to spend with them. Just after a quick glance in their catalog, you can get an idea, you know, you can even put together that first order. And if that first order is 20, 25, that, you know, you're like, hey, I could spend, you double it, triple it. I spend $60,000 a month with you. You know, my guy, I'm, I'm in the business of growing lifelong relationships. So I'm looking for like a lifelong partnership here where we continue to grow together. You know, so I love talking about, because at the end of the day, they're business owners, they want that money. I'm sure Sebastian got something to add too. What kind of shoes are those? Common Project? Yes. Those are dope. Those are Thank dope. you. I'm a big shoe guy. I, Thank I, you. I had to ask you. <laughs> um, what I would say is, yeah, it's all about the relationships. At the end of the day, it's what you could provide and don't just make it about monetary uh, benefits. Eric's absolutely right, 100% it's gonna be about monetary, but also there's products that Eric takes from one of our suppliers that that, that supplier can't really move and we can't move it on Amazon, but we'll take it in order to help them because big picture guys, in the long run, we know it's gonna come back and, and benefit us. So we're always providing a service and a relationship we understand is always two ways. So look at what you could do for them rather than what they could do for you and you'll see there'll be longevity in your relationships. Got it, thank you guys. Awesome, we got time for one more question. Right here. So I had a question. What books would you guys say would recommend for us to grow as we're growing our business because as you guys said you invest into a, a bigger uh, the funnel clicks you met so many other people through that so as we're continuously growing ourselves what books have you read and then also what's one way that you guys for yourself broke a bad habit or try to change your mindset about something to continuously go to the next step level like what was the the physical mind and just transformation like what was one habit that you did change the bad habits um so i would say two books i really enjoyed recently well uh, the 5 a.m club is a phenomenal book which kind of helped change my life uh, also driven by douglas rackman i believe or randall i forget his last name but driven uh another book i could really relate to and bad habits um bad habits i i love them now because what i've learned through them and I, i've had many believe it or not um is to feel them I'll feel that angst inside of me. My chest starts burning up and I've, I've learned, um, think like a monk, Jay Shetty. Um, I've learned to kind of just feel it, feel it. It's okay to feel that angst and not try to escape, right? Whether it's a, a, a drink or social media, or if you're using something as an escape, then you're using it incorrectly. They should be tools for us to use and not for us to escape from reality. So when I have these bad habits, I try to pause. And that's why I have these alarm clocks set to just pause in my day because so many times I get caught in that mouse wheel and I'm just doing to do. It's almost like I'm on autopilot and I just need to sometimes pause and remember I am a being. You know, on a deeper sense, I am a being, and and so I gotta be and not just do. Yeah, as far as books go, I would say Speak to Sell, Dan Kennedy. It's all about, right now it just lines up with my life perfectly. It's about like how to 
make sales to people when you're on stages, you know? So it's like, but it also gives you an inside look into like the mind of a marketer and really how a customer thinks, which is amazing for any business because every business has customers. Um, the second book would be The 50th Law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. It's, it really talks about becoming your own person and only relying on yourself for your actions and success and not working for the man essentially you know like putting all your eggs in your basket instead of leaving eggs in other people's basket yeah i've broken a lot of bad habits in my day you know i was a troubled kid you know i, had a, I did a lot of drugs and drinking when i was younger so i've broken a lot of bad habits and and i would say um what got me to break not only those bad habits but also other bad habits in my life for me personally was a direct connection spiritual connection to some sort of higher power you know and then seeking that continuing to seek that and then also focusing on mind spirit and body as well um so this is this is this is going to kind of drive me to to this last thing here i know we're going to wrap this up but you're going to experience this multiple times in the growth of your company right you're going to come to events like this you're going to work on your mind body and spirit and they're going to get real real healthy you know and then your business is going to grow as a direct result of how healthy your mind spirit and body are and then because your business is going to grow and you're experiencing success you're going to stop focusing on your mind body and spirit and your business is a direct result of that lack of focus on those three important aspects are going to diminish the growth of your business and you're going to be back at stage one where you have to put all of your emphasis on your mind body and spirit and I'm going through that again probably for the fourth or fifth time in past maybe six or seven years where I'm experiencing that and it's up to me or you as an individual to recognize it and take action to fix it Awesome, thank you guys so much. Guys, let's give it up for Amazon Lit.